Today we're going to talk about predicting products. What's going to happen in class is I'm going to give you your reactants. Based upon what type of chemical reaction you have, you're going to be able to predict what you make as a product. So in order to predict what you make as a product, what you do is you look to see what type of reaction you have. This is a compound in a single element, so as we learned in the last video, this is called a single replacement type reaction. For your single replacement type reaction, you're going to have to make sure that your anions replace anions. So chlorine is an anion, so is bromine. These two are going to trade places. Your magnesium has to be paired up with another anion. So you have a cation here and an anion. So in order to predict your products, usually I try to think about it like a T-chart like this. Chlorine is a single element. I don't care that there's a two there when I'm predicting. All I want to know is what elements or polyatomic ions are present. I have magnesium and I have bromine. So what's going to happen is when it goes through this chemical reaction at the arrow, these elements are going to break apart and then they're going to reconfigure themselves with new ions. So I'm going to look up the charges on the periodic table of chlorine, magnesium, and bromine and then re-swap and drop. So I have magnesium, has a plus two charge. Bromine is negative one, chlorine is negative one. So in order to predict my products here, you actually have to trade partners. Magnesium is currently paired up with bromine. Now we're gonna pair it up with chlorine. But then that leaves bromine with nothing to pair with. So that is gonna be my single element on the other side of the reaction. Bromine, you need to ask yourself, is it diatomic or Brinkelhoff, as we say in class? Bromine is, so it gets a two. Then I'm going to swap and drop with magnesium and chlorine. Mg plus two, Cl minus one, the plus and the minus disappear. So you end up with Mg, Cl, two. The next step would be to balance this reaction. Two bromine, two bromine two chlorine, two chlorine, one magnesium, one magnesium. That one is already balanced. Now this next one, I have a compound and a compound. So that means that I have a double replacement type reaction. I do the same general thing that I did up here where I have my cations on one side, my anions on the other. I'm gonna write them down first and then I'm gonna find their charges. So I have silver and I have nitrate I have zinc and I have chlorine. Then I need to write down their charges. Nitrate has a negative one charge. If nitrate's negative one, that means silver is plus one. Chlorine has a negative one charge. There's two of them, so that's negative two. That means that zinc has to be plus two to equal zero. So I have my silver and my nitrate, my zinc and my chlorine. Those are currently paired up. I need to trade their partners. So these two and those two are gonna pair up. And I have to re-swap and drop. So I'm gonna take my silver and pair it up with my chlorine, AgCl, one and one, plus Zn, that has a plus two charge, negative one, so NO3 with a two out back there. So I just re-swapped and dropped. After I do that, I need to balance my reaction. I have one silver and one silver, one nitrate and two nitrates, so I need to fix my nitrate. That gives me two silver, two silver, two chlorine, two chlorine, one zinc, one zinc. That is our balanced reaction. Now on this next one, I have a single element and a single element. If we have two single elements, that's a synthesis type reaction. What we're gonna do for our synthesis is we have to make sure that we have our positive and our negative. These are always written plus charge first and negative charge second. So sodium is going to come first, chlorine comes second. Look up the charges on my periodic table, plus one and minus one, and then swap and drop. The plus and the minus disappear. There's no ones to travel, so you just end up with NaCl. After that, we're going to balance our reaction. Two chlorine and two chlorine, two sodium, to sodium. The next one, I have a compound and a compound, so this is going to be a double replacement reaction. 
I have hydrogen paired up with chlorine, iron paired up with oxygen. I need to find their charges. Hydrogen has a plus one charge, chlorine minus one. Iron in this compound has a negative three, I'm sorry, positive three, I don't know why I said negative. Positive three charge, oxygen is negative two. So to find that, I just reversed my swap and drop, plus three, minus two, oxygen does have a negative two charge, so we're good there. So now I need to form my new compounds. When I form my new compounds, my hydrogen is going to pair up with my oxygen, iron with chlorine. So I'm going to have H2O, that's water, plus FeCl3. Now when I go to balance this reaction, I have hydrogen, I have chlorine, I have iron, and I have oxygen. So I need to balance it out. I have two hydrogen and two, hi I'm sorry, one hydrogen. So I need two over here. If I put a two out front here, that's going to give me two and two. Now with my chlorines, I have two chlorines here and I have three over here. So something's not right. This is a reason why we want to make sure that we save our hydrogens for last to balance it out. So I'm just going to get rid of that coefficient real quick, and we're going to go on to another one. Here I have two irons. I need two irons over here. So if I put a two out front there, that gives me two irons and two irons. That now gives me six chlorine. So I need six chlorine over here. That's a far cry from the two that I started with. So I'm going to put the six right there. That gives me six chlorine and six chlorine. That part's balanced. Now I have six hydrogen. I need six hydrogen over here. Three times two is going to give me those six. I have three oxygen and three oxygen. Everything's balanced. So my coefficients here are six, one, three, two. The last reaction that we are going to predict the products on in my class, I'm going to tell you that it's a combustion reaction. So it'll always say something like, hey, you have combustion. If you have a combustion reaction, you have CH4 reacting with O2, you have the same simple little project, products. You're going to make carbon dioxide, and you're going to make water all the time if you have a combustion reaction. To balance out your combustion reactions, you always balance your carbons first, which is actually already done. Hydrogen second. 2 times 2 is 4, 4. My oxygens we save for last because I have 2 right here. And I had 1 with the coefficient of 2. That gives me 4 total because 2 plus 2 is 4. I need 4 over here. 2 times 2 is 4. So it makes your life a little easier to balance it out when you save your oxygens for last. Now a couple things that I tell my classes just that are easy um, things to remember. Silver is always a plus one charge. So if we're predicting products, silver is going to have a plus one. Zinc always has a plus two charge. For your other elements, if you can't figure out the charge, and I forget to tell you what the charge is, I always say for my class, just when in doubt, it's a plus two, because that's most of the time what it is. Um, but these two are going to be very helpful for you when you're predicting your products because silver is just always plus one, zinc is always plus two. And those seem to come up a lot in the lab. But with your predicting products, like I said, you need to figure out what type of reaction you have. Once you figure out what type of reaction you have, take the different compounds apart, break them up into their ions, and then reconfigure them.